every new quarter we find a new baba who okay. spams the platform in this game if you if you don't have top notch algos top notch ml you're not on the table i don't know how many people get a highest valued private company coming in yeah. copying your product fighting with them was nothing like this they were a monster they had the courage to come to a foreign country clone the entire app scrape all the content and start a new new app uh, no shame right no shame aku said don't worry the moment tiktok gets banned within 24 hours i'll launch i have in share chat the chat part didn't work share part was that new year is I the time when our servers uh, servers melted pre payment world you have to be ruthless hmm. most of the things don't work so what that find that tiny thing that works remove everything else just focus on that and and also at that stage right when you're so early most people don't believe in okay so you're also not at the luxury of getting anybody you want right if if you would have wanted we would want like meta c to join us <laughs> <laughs> we we tried tried to build social media through blackboards it doesn't work hmm. i think social media finds you you don't find social media so we're nothing but an algorithm which matches the right creator with their deserving audience uh and it manifests differently in shared and moj but that's essentially the core of what we are building and and i think last two years uh we've had a amazing journey scaling this team we, most of our ai team is uh, out of london now the best folks that you can imagine in from the global companies uh and i think we're building that algorithm but for bharat uh, uh at shared and moj that is where no, we are kush uh just one more uh, this thing uh evolution of a social network right it's measured by retention long term retention right mm-hmm. so how far are we are we like at par with uh, let's say instagram or are we are we just reaching there or yeah. we ahead in india yeah i think again retention you can divide by cohorts right mm-hmm. overall level i think we are not yet there mm-hmm. at ig level but you will find pockets like for example uh, tamil is one of the strongest retention languages oh, okay where uh, i think we have comparable retention uh, and in fact more reach than facebook so one of the strong points we uh, sell to advertisers is that within tamil telugu and karnataka our reach would, act- would actually be bigger uh, than what facebook can offer bigger than facebook facebook's no. reach yes no, no. yes and more retention also more attention in those pockets okay yes. sankush let's go back right so uh so when you started this site how did you go about discovering the market right so was tam the most important thing or or you were looking for white spaces or acuteness of problem what were the criteria what how did you yeah we, we didn't know the full form of tam when we started <laughs> <laughs> that that definitely wasn't the case i think we we discovered uh, that the uh, i think the, the the signal i would say that made us believe this will be a really big problem was the amount of pain and and hard work people went through to just get content so we saw i think the trigger point was we saw people uh, sharing their phone numbers publicly in the hope that a whatsapp group admin will, will find their phone number add them to whatsapp group and then they will get a joke and this is 2014 and a guy who wants a hindi joke is sharing phone numbers publicly it it should not be the case right so the mvp was built on whatsapp yes and the acuteness of the problem right it was so absurd that that to get a joke you have to go through so many hoops it should not be the case and therefore the problem is very very like the, the like the if if you get a good solution people will will adopt essentially that was the the hint we got and then we jumped in uh we had we did some math around how large is the regional ads market like very, very very rough because we had to pitch vcs those are discouraging mostly right <laughs> the tv numbers were not yeah so we i think that that might still be true now uh about uh, i think 70 to 80% of tv ads revenue even now is through regional channels as in non english channels so that's still a very big number right when digital comes there it has to be somewhere around that but the ad market itself was what yeah, yeah. what a billion dollars yeah yeah probably couple yeah. of billion maybe yeah yeah good old days right <laughs> <laughs> so uh ankush Uh, more often than not in consumer startups especially pmf is the is the key yeah. word right so how do you feel how did you feel when you got that you know the first time when the server started crashing and what metric were you tracking and how did you feel ke yeah. metric cross kar gaya ha 
So um, I think we started with a public chat room product uh, because we were like people want WhatsApp groups. They have the limitations of 100 members, non-discoverable, the lists, and, and they're very comfortable with that sort of UX. So we will build uh, WhatsApp groups like a product, but they are public, discoverable, and don't have a member limit. That was the basic idea. We, we made that, again, really pathetic attention, no organics. Uh, that was the red share chat, right? That was the red share chat, yeah. Uh, we used to see, people used to come, just chat, hi, hello, hi, hello, and leave. Uh, so, so I think one of the metrics was retention. Uh, it was not, not just DAU, but actually retention <coughs> that we were looking at. And it wasn't very encouraging. Uh, from that, uh, we realized that there was one cohort which was showing really good attention. And that was the cohort which would scroll through the entire chat, download the content, and then be happy with it. So between 10 hi and hellos, there'll be one, say, wallpaper or ringtone. And the folks who did the effort to scroll, download, were the happiest people on the platform. So we're like, this conversation anyways is not helping with a lot of people. Let's focus on delivering content. And that is when we moved to chatbots. And we were like, you don't need too many humans. There's one chatbot which will give you wallpapers, which will give you train ticket booking, whatever you need uh, in your own language. Uh, and, and the reason we kept chat as a UX, because we were like, they only understand WhatsApp. So we will give them content, but through a WhatsApp like UI. I, I remember that in Goa, you guys were tricking. Yeah. <laughs> we also made like, those are some of the viral services uh, yeah. Yeah. that we had built. To, those were like embedded viral hacks. Uh, they, they did work, but again, the product wasn't working. So viral hacks are not that, that helpful in that case. So that happened. Uh, there again, we had a learning that most of the sophisticated chatbots uh, were not working. The ones that were working was Hindi ringtone, Deepika wallpaper, uh, Tamil jokes, like the usual content early, stuff. Early, like early users of internet people who just got fo internet first time in their life in 2015, mm. they probably weren't really in a position to communicate or or chat. They were simply looking to consume something. Basically. That was a discovery. Even, even the ones who were who were doing, let's say, IES preparation, there was a chatbot. Mm. They were not retained well. Even the guys who were saying, we, we built a very smart bot which will recommend you a phone to buy. Mm. And, and smartphone market was still growing very heavily, uh, strongly then, right? Mm. So we thought you put your inputs and we'll recommend you the best phone in your budget. Even that didn't work. Right. The only ones that worked was wallpaper, ringtone, joke, shairi. In share chat, the chat part didn't work, share part worked. Share part worked. And therefore, we were like, okay, now, now we have narrowed down the problem mm. that only content is important. Hmm. Uh, now, what is the most efficient way to give content? And we thought the best way is just give it a feed. So the fact that we went to feed was not because Facebook had it or somebody else had it. We, we figured this is the most effective way people will consume content. But there was, there, there was still a difference. Uh, in those times, the people who used, uh, who used to get content through WhatsApp did have Facebook, but did not use Facebook. Hmm. And the reason was India had such bad internet that only WhatsApp worked. Right. So it was not the UX, it was actually the data connectivity done better in WhatsApp that was working. So we were like, we'll build a feed like product which serves you content, but the entire backend, tech backend will be built like WhatsApp. Right. So whenever we find that tiny burst of 2G network, we'll push content to you. Hmm. And we, we used to get this user feedback that people wake up in the morning and none of the apps are showing any latest content, but ShareChat has put new Shiree. Because they've been updating, pushing content. And we have been, because during the night, whenever we got that burst, we used to push content. And they used to feel that ShareChat works offline. <laughs> and and that was the really the killer feature. So it was feed plus this tech is when we found the PMF. And, and, and when I say PMF, the retention doubled. The sharing per DAU became almost 5x. We used to measure sh sharing Shares per DAU, yes. I, I think at that time, it seemed like our competition was share it, right? Share it. Share it came a little later. A little later. Little I later. mean, yeah, share it was more. Share it was more Bluetooth, yeah. Bluetooth, Bluetooth apps, content, yeah. heavy content. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but but Ankush, so so the way you built arrived at the PMF was you built a bunch of features, then found out which features are actually working for users, right, including the tech. Finding first part. like like e even if for like using the cohorts of yeah, even for like if, it, if it, for the three percent cohort, hmm. the retention numbers are just like disproportionately higher than the rest of the platform. Hmm. In a pre-PMF world, you will kill everything else and focus on that. 
Right. A post-payment world will be, will be very different. You'll try to retain expand. them. You want to expand, but a pre-payment world, you have to be ruthless. Hmm. Most of the things don't work. So what? That find that tiny thing that works. Like remove everything else. Just focus on that. Phenomenal. How many years did it take you to reach this doubled retention? How many iterations? Forget iteration. It was like probably every month you were iterating. So, How many years? Never Two and a half years. Again, I think November 2014 we found the insight that content is important. Mm. October 2015, so about a year from then, is when we launched the feed product, mm. which started growing. Right. Uh, so, so I think to get to PMF, it took about one year uh, from the insight. Uh, like, insight. Before that, we were doing something else. So, if you we building, if you think out various things, our journey between me, Farid and Banu, then you can imagine three years. Because we started with a real estate company <laughs> to building a social network. So two That's a three years of iterating with what to build. Yes. Trying out various things. Once you got the insight to launch that and perfect that yeah. for PMF was one one more year. Yes. Practically three years of just like figuring out yes. things, right? Yes. And then the next level of PMF that you achieved was when you grew like almost 10x in 2017. Yeah. So I think there. Uh, we had a very interesting thing, right? So when we launched this October version, which was, uh, which had great attention, a lot of sharing, our DAOs just exploded. In fact, that new year is I the time know. when our servers, servers melted. Because we, so that was the first new year post payment. And now, like now that we have been through many new years, new year is typically our highest traffic uh, time. We didn't know that because it was the first new year. And we had prepared for one and a half X traffic. It went to three X that particular day and we had not prepared for that. So that happened. Um, but in, in, in general, yeah, so, so our DAOs were increasing. Retention was de doing decently well. It was still not, not anywhere close that we can sustain a very large product, right? Like still very much below than, than desirable levels. So we, we tried to figure, okay, we've cracked the virality DAOs. This DAOs will not sustain unless we fix retention. So how do you fix retention of a social product? Uh, and we started reading because we had no experience building social networks. Right? So we started reading the, okay, what did Facebook do, what did Twitter do, what did Pinterest do. Everyone had figured some uh, uh, correlation. So, so uh, like Facebook figured if I get a user and make him do like seven friend request, then we'll get a good feed and the guy will retain. Twitter figured if we get a user, make them follow like 10 accounts. Uh, they'll have a good feed and they'll retain. So we're like maybe building a graph, a follow graph, friend graph is really the way to go, right? So for the first two years after that, we kept trying to build this follow graph. Follow graph. So and then because time, you have to follow Silicon Valley. Yeah, you because we, 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 we knew not, like that's the best we, we could that's have. The, that's the literature available, yeah. that's the insight available to you. And we worked on people you may follow, onboarding celebrities, giving them blue tech accounts, building that follow feed. For two years, that effort led to very minimal gains. But on the side, there was a three member team. And these were, uh, in fact, my teammates from ACM ICPC. So we used to have this programming competition mm -hmm. in college. These were my teammates who were working on something called a trending feed. Mm -hmm. And to them, I had said, forget about the follow graph. You just have to increase the time spent on this feed. Use whatever signal you want. And they used to build the, like what we used to call trending algorithms and now ML feed. They used to start, like they, they started building on that. And that team outperformed the rest of the company hmm. in incremental time spent for the first two years. And around 2017, we said the whole West, the Silicon Valley thing is not working for us. Hmm. For whatever reason, it is not working, but this trending feed is working. And we made trending as a default feed. And that is when things started to change massively. And, and I think till then, we were still smaller than Twitter and, and very, trying to build a very similar product. Yeah. Post that, we got real differentiation. So you, you still, you're still solving the same problem of surfacing trending content, but you're not constrained by the follow graph. And that, as it turns out, is far more efficient than if you were to continue on the follow graph path. And I think now every social network is, is just it's trending, moving away from trending first. Even YouTube, kind of trend graph follow everything graph. is, is yes. trending now. Right. In fact, by and large, even Twitter is about trending. Yeah, yeah, if, you, if you look, what did Elon do yeah. the moment he acquired Twitter? Yeah. Yeah. First he thing he was made the first feed trending feed. Yeah. No, for no follow graph. Yeah. So, Ankush, uh, one question is that most, uh, most of the founders, when they are basically building this social kind of product, right, there are three metrics, acquisition, engagement, retention, right. So, what do you think 
when you are before P PMF, right? Post PMF, though, of course, you focus mm. on retention, right? But pre PMF, how, which one to prioritize, right? I mean, pre PMF, you should have a very strong view of what action is the most important. When when a user is coming to my product, which action will tell me they got the value? If you start measuring retention or DAO, they are too lagging a metric, right? So in our case, sharing was that metric. So we believed if you are scrolling content, if you and, and, and the behavior of the user was if they really like something, they will definitely share it back with their friend, with their family group, friend group. So sharing meant you really like something. So if you can lift sharing, that that's a far bigger validation. So so when we launched this PMF product, right, our, our sharing was the sharpest signal. That improved 5x. Your retention and all did improve, but if you had to measure only one metric, you had to measure sharing because that was the sharpest moving metric which which mean which meant user happiness yeah so you have to find that one engagement metric that you believe is is what really matters you will eventually see that if you lift that your retention should also increase and 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 if that happens to a step jump sort of fashion you have you would have that also increases the liquidity right yes and of course sharing is not the most intuitive metric that you would have thought of right I mean, mm. uh, originally mm. we discovered sharing as the yes. important metric which is like a leading metric and then driving D30, D7, all of that. Yeah. Uh, how do how does a startup like sort of you know it's not about reading and replicating what other people are doing, mm. what we see and an analysts are asking you to do, right? Mm. Uh, so did you have a decision making process? Ki nahi, okay, there are thirty metrics. Mm. This is what I'm going to pick. How do you pick that one? Intuitive. Again, again it's not scientific, right? You, you have to believe. So you have to believe in a worldview hmm. that why do I believe this product exists? And how would I say that people really love the product? So, so our worldview was people want content. They are going through these hoops to get content. So, therefore, there is a world where this product should exist and people should find content here. Now, how do we measure that people really like the content? You could measure it by likes, time spent, shares. We believe that the people who, when people really love something, they share it out. And we got this through talking to them. So, so I think it is more like what is your worldview? And if that is true, what should happen on your product? Right. And then you take a, I think it's, it's more gut plus user feedback. But tell me about talking to users, right? I remember that you ended up going to my native village in mm. Rajasthan, mm. Taranagar. Taranagar. You went there and then when you came back, I found out you had gone to my native village. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that you are going there. Right? Yeah. Uh, why? Why go that far? It's like two hours away from a railway station and six hours away from Jaipur, right? We in fact went further. There was a village yeah. called Bhesli village, yeah. <laughs> which is even remote. Uh, I think this was the time when uh, I think Geo was about happening. Yeah. So there was a lot of changes happening uh, in in the country, and I think we were just curious, like okay, we as I said, right, our entire thesis on PMF was we will build a tech stack like WhatsApp. So our, our PMF was on the back of a largely broken 2G India. Now that if, we, if India is to become a 4G country or now a 5G country, we don't even know what will work. What is like what what assumptions are changing? What's really happening? So I think it was just like sheer curiosity. Let's go and see what's happening yeah, in so the world. I, I remember having this conversation. Of course, that in our share chat app, there were thumbnails, right? The, mm. the full photograph will not load. Of mm. course, video was not there, but photographs will also not load. It, you will just see a thumbnail of that. Mm. And I said, now Geo has come, right? You should mm. basically allow data is free. Yeah. And that's when we basically made that. Change. Yeah, yeah. We, we saw a massive shift from uh, share chat being 90% text to it being 30% text within six months of Geo launch. And then that, this was image because video supply was not there. And then uh, post that, we saw video sort of growing. So and that is largely, it's largely video, now. video. Yeah. So, Ankur, how do you think about building teams, right, in early stage and uh, not of last couple of years, but mm. in 2015 when you are hiring your first mm. leaders, right? How mm. do you think about them that whether they will be scalable and will I still mean, have the chops to be a part of a billion dollar company or so? How, how do you go about yeah. that? Uh, yeah, honestly, I think we, we didn't hire <laughs> people. Uh, always, always putting in a strain that we also want this person to be at a billion dollar scale. If they, if they scale up, great. But would they be like really excited for the right reasons? Can they, can they work in a very ambiguous sort of environment? And obviously the, the tech jobs, right? So we, we got our first few folks coming from Adobe, uh, I think Google. Like these were our batchmates, so we could sort of tap into them. They were really highly skilled people 
who are very passionate and believed in the mission and wanted to solve it. Whether they could become the VP of engineering, nobody knew. But for the next two years, they would they would be great partners, would want to work with us, and and they believe in the mission. I think that is what sort of matters. A lot, like some of them will will scale up to become your leaders in a, in a large org, and that's a great outcome. Some of them will not, uh, and I think that happens with every startup. And and also at that stage, right when you're so early, most people don't believe in you. Okay. So you're also not at the luxury of getting anybody you want, right? If, if we would have wanted, we would want like Meta CEO to join us. <laughs> <laughs> that that never happens, right? That will never exist. So you have to live with whatever network you have and find the people who truly will work. Like if it takes 15 hours, if they'll work 15 hours, they're, they're 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 excited for the right reasons, not because they'll be part of a cool startup, but because they they believe in the mission. They'll grind with you and and. But but well, was that pool largely from your network yes. or, or largely? Basically? For the for the harder hires, which is like engineering PMs, hmm. those were largely from uh, my network. In fact, the the Algo team, as I mentioned, right, it is the hardest team. Even today, hmm. the hardest team to build is the ML team, and those folks were my teammates in ICPC. If I had not been like a teammate there, it would be really hard to pull. And these were the people who, who uh, like, a lot of them are now in Google and Facebook. So they were the like, top of the top talent. And so, you set up a London office just to capture. <laughs> Yeah, London offers. I think we realized that it is going to be really hard to find like the, those three people, yeah. grooming them to be the best versions and finding like 10x more yeah. is just not possible in India because none of these companies, if you look at YouTube, Pinterest, Facebook, ever build their feed ranking teams in India. Yeah, they, they, like like Amazon, for example, has still built PMs and all, mm. but none of them ever build feed ranking. So if I'm building an e-commerce company, I can get PMs from Flipkart. But what do I do if I'm building for the first time in the country a feed ranking algorithm? There's nobody. Right. So today we have about 30-40% of our team in London, all senior folks. Mm. The remaining folks are, are really smart junior folks, but in India. And they will be the next set of leaders. They're, they're grooming the leadership, yes. ML leadership in yes. India. Phenomenal. I mean, I remember speaking to you about London being midway, yeah. and a good place to capture. Yeah. People will shift, happy to shift to London also. Yeah. Ankush, how is the share chat users? I mean, which is like we're talking about, like bulk of user, non-metro users. Mm. How has that user evolved right? from the days of you know struggling to to download and and only saying hi mm. uh, and sharing content? Has the user also evolved now? I mean, user has evolved. One is I think the the consumption pattern itself has evolved. They're far more uh, I think far more data insensitive hmm. than where, like previously they would count data in KBs yes. and, and be very paranoid. And they will uninstall your app if you yeah, yeah. Today they'll still have that thing ki if you breach the 1 GB geo limit then they are concerned but till like, about half a GB they are fine. Post that they start worrying about. So I think one is like people are just far more open and free about uh, consuming. I think people's interests have also become more niche. So we used to find that earlier on it was usually like large topics around fun, humor, dance, wishes, I think all the good morning. Astrology, cricket, those kind of things. Yeah. We have found that over time, and it's also a function of what we have built as a product, we have gone deeper and we've seen people's interest also diverge from just being about entertainment, jokes, all of that, to now going very niche. Uh, could be education, uh, astrology. Astrology is also a niche topic in our, in our world. I remember uh, Mehndi Designs being Mehndi a designs, big yeah. category. Yeah. So, Ankush, we can't have this conversation not bringing up what happened in 2018, right? 2018. Mm, mm. The TikTok onslaught. And mm. So, would you want to share? And this how is a the problem period? that can happen to any of us, right? When anybody is building a consumer business, but then you find that a competitor has come in. I don't know, the, I don't know how many people get, a, get the highest valued private company coming in, yeah. copying your product. No, no. <laughs> that, that, I, I can I agree. I mean, I think probably the only equivalent will be Amazon. Yeah. Jeff Bezos coming on an elephant, yeah. <laughs> making a big entry into <laughs> India. TikTok made a similar entry, right? Yeah. Actually, yeah. Okay. What went into your mind? Oh, yeah. What was? What were you thinking? How was the team coping up? How were you able to motivate yourself every day? That I have raised this hundred million dollar, and the guy, other guy, is spending thirty million dollars a month. Yeah. Know, how to fight them? Hundred million dollars a quarter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the budget. Yeah. And and has raised more capital than all the VCs in your cap table, right? <laughs> Yeah, I think it. I think we, we honestly didn't understand the gravity early on because it was a Chinese company, right? We've never we've never heard of them. We had only heard of them 
in the VC community that there's a company which has a product which is doing really well in China. We're like, okay, fine. And we are we are anyways fighting a battle with Facebook, right? So okay, fighting another half a billion, uh, half a trillion dollar company. Maybe they're also similar kind. Uh, but I think fighting with them was nothing like Facebook. Okay. They were a monster on mm -hmm. on their own. Uh, and and they had the courage to come to a foreign country, clone the entire app, scrape all the content, and start a new new app. Uh, no shame, right? No shame. And we went to Delhi High Court. I think that's all public. Uh, and and this is something that Facebook wouldn't have done. Ki they would scrape your app and copy no. the app. They wouldn't have done. They that, that was the time they went, they were going through all the lawsuits. Yeah, uh, all of that. So they anyways were were pre preoccupied with that. Hmm. Uh, so we we could have never imagined that that larger company would bother about us so much <laughs> that they would <coughs> clone the app. But I think once they did that, we, we realized they're very serious. And then they started marketing. Hmm. Uh, and their first month budget was more than all our cumulative marketing before that. And we're like, how does that uh, sort of, uh, how do we fight that? And I think there was, so I think, Beyond all the rage to get back at them, they copied us. I think we had, we built immense respect for that company. I mean, the way they came, executed was was something very inspiring uh, in general. Uh, and then we also realized the power of, of ML and algorithms, fighting with them. Because when we used to think of a product feature, how do we run our content operations community, we used to actually believe we are, way, we are far, far better. We used to interview their content folks and we're like, they will not pass their L3 guy will not pass an L1 into you. We had such great talent. But for some reason, when we when we used to launch a feature, we always found that they got better adoption because they used to copy the feature, but got better adoption. And we struggled to understand like how could it be? And I think that is what taught us that your underlying algorithms are are far more important than anything else. In this game, if you're if you don't have top-notch algos, top-notch ML, you're not on the table. So I think that, that that was a very humbling experience. Uh, eventually, I think we, we started, we learned to fight against them. Don't fight them on capital and algo. Essentially, if you if you take a fight to them, which is about your algorithm and capital, you are fighting a losing battle. So I think we, we, we found our ways to not be, let that be the primary access. Uh, we went deeper into groups. Uh, we went to, to chat rooms. So for example, chat rooms was a result of an anti bite down strategy because the, the initial version of chatroom was how do we build warm communities, yeah. stronger there connections. No, no AI advantage there. No AI advantage there. In fact, we will, so when we thought about devotional chatroom, we said we'll go and find the strongest Hanuman Bhats in the country and make them host. Hmm. Baitas will never do that. Uh, so, so we found that we have to fight on the taxes. Uh, eventually, they got banned and chatroom became, I think, uh, into a different direction. But I think you, you start to learn on what not to fight. So with, with, with your experience, how will you advise other uh, founders to treat competition? Be paranoid or basically be just See. attentive or just ignore, that's okay. You can't ignore of course. <coughs> and if, if somebody has cloned your app and scraped your content, you can definitely not ignore because yeah. they've built the same product. Uh, but you have to be aware what they're doing as, as, we, as, as I mentioned, right? Like they're the same product to begin with. But over time it diverged. They went into, I think, educational video lives while, while we went into audio chat rooms. Very different directions. So over time you have to learn what paths should you pick, which you are strong at, and then focus on that. So be aware what they're doing. And if they're as large as a ByteDance sort of player, you know what not to fight on. So you have to be aware, you have to be paranoid a little. But at the end, when you pick a path which is significantly differentiated, then you have to be obsessed about your customer. And how can I build? Because you picked that path. And then you don't have to worry how much capital they've raised, how big they, it's okay. Because you've picked the path which is which is sort of capital independent, right? You have we had hundred million and we had a chat from them. Yes. It doesn't matter. Yes. Ankush, how did this shape your response when eventually in May twenty twenty, TikTok got banned? So did this experience and the treatment you got from TikTok, did it play a role in, you also discovered your own beast mode, right? Yeah, I think uh, that was the, shape? Uh, that was the time to get back at them. So mm -hmm. we like, we copied chat and we'll copy TikTok. Uh, we launched Moj in 30 years. Yeah. And in fact, I had in a, in, in that town hall set a timeline that we'll build in two days. The team was far more aggressive than me. They, they built in 30 years. Hmm. And we they were- We 15 days before. <laughs> we had discussed, right? We had, we had, we had made no difference. <laughs> 
Because we'll take 15 days, no? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we, we, we had a conversation, we said, TikTok is getting banned, we should make a... Aku said, don't worry, the moment TikTok gets banned, within 24 hours, I'll launch an app. Good hmm. And then you also went after <laughs> grabbing the market share. Grabbing the market share, I, I think beyond this getting back at them and all of that rage, right? The, I think the more uh, fundamental uh, assumption was, we are the only Indian company to have built some feed ranking. And the, again, for a short video business, this is the most important thing. Yeah. We're not building a follow graph, friend graph. It's essentially, con it's, it's a, in fact, way more dependent on the algorithm because it's, there's nothing but a video and you scroll to the next video. Yeah. So, so I think that was the, the more fundamental bet that we can build that best. By the end of that year, we also realized that Meta is also great at that. Yeah. So again, you do, don't want to repeat the same mistake. Therefore, the, I think we had made, a, made an attempt to build a Bay Area team a year yeah. back, which yeah. didn't get a lot of support. Uh, but this time, we were remote and we said, we anyways remote, right? So how does it matter? Yeah. So we went out and built uh, a global AI org. And then I think that was a, a very strong inflection point in our journey. Right. Because we, for the first time, understood and, and got the right people who could build the algo and take it to the next level. Right. And today, when we plan for our retention gains, right? You, majority of the gains we index on, on feed ranking improvement. And that's how you achieved majority of your gains? On yes. The feed ranking? Yes. And then now you are you are you are planning to use the AI chops to improve your performance also. Yes. So so if you if you look at even today, how does Facebook's uh, revenue increase? Right. It is largely per, and they for every quarter they have a target target on how much can you improve your models, uh, or AUC or metric. Or, so essentially every ML model would have a would have a prediction, right? So so they essentially want to improve the prediction level. Even today after decades of building, they still get gains from that. That's how large this lever is. And we're still like two years into the journey. So for the next 10 years, we have a lot of compounding still to be unlocked just by improving our ML models. So what you're saying is, share chart goes from here will be one index of how big the, the growth of the market, digital advertising, how much your own traffic grows, mm. and then how much your algorithm performs. Yes. The combination of all these three. Yes. That's the compounding effect you're looking for. Yep. A significant amount of time now. Yeah. Phenomenal. Ankush, uh, just just to tell us, like you know, uh, what kind of revenues outside ad revenues do you have within ShareChat now? What are you expecting to build in the near future? Yeah. So I think we we were uh, pretty early on onto this micro payment uh, yes. sort of stream, and this is uh, I think we have two streams now: ads and and micro payments, both roughly contributing half hmm. uh, to our top line. Uh, and I, I think it started with those with the chat room uh, thing I mentioned, right? So we launched chat room in in share chat, which was an audio slot, on top of which we allowed people to gift each other. Yeah. Uh, and I think that that has tipping kind of a thing. Tipping kind of a thing. Uh, and we in fact we saw very interesting use cases happening during COVID. Uh, this was in fact before we launched revenue, but you could you could see the behavior, right? We I, think, could, I think you guys didn't. Do a PR, but this was before Clubhouse, right? This was before Clubhouse. Before Clubhouse. Yeah, yeah. So this was more like a Clubhouse. If you can before Clubhouse. Share the size of this. How many people make payments every month, and how many people receive payments broadly? Uh, we would have about <laughs> five lakh people uh, making payments. Maybe making payments every month. Every month. Wow. Yeah. And how many would receive? Uh, I mean, uniques would be pretty high of the same order. Oh, okay. but. Like top one lakh people, these are well, the people yes. who are doing very well, yeah. the big influencers. Yeah. Yeah. And these are influencers who are sort of building a life out of this. Yeah, I think Moj is more influencer led. Huh. Uh, share chat is more community led. Oh. So, because share chat is about chat groups, right? So, it's, it's about eight people oh. almost becoming it's friends. A regular community. Yeah, you would, you would even have clan fights. So, there's a Rajput lovers fighting uh, some other clan and they gift to make their clan win. So, it's not influencer. Battle, battle, battle royal. Battle, oh. yeah. <laughs> So, so ch ch chat room is, I think, more community-led. Mod uh, tipping is more right. influencer-led. Let's let's take some audience questions. Do we have the paper circulated? Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Tell us something interesting about uh, insights of Indian users, right? I mean, uh, we are the best, like, three hundred million people, right? Mm -hmm. What new? What is like the most like interesting one or two insights that you discovered recently? It's a yes, below him. So this is the one of the behaviors. Tipping is for, for me, for example, mm. 5 lakh people tipping is 
very interesting insight, right? Mm -hmm. What else have you discovered? I think micro payments continues to surprise us. Hmm. Like, why would people tip hmm. uh, or continue to tip? Okay. Uh, I think we are. So, so there was one very interesting uh, thing, like creator, which so the creator came online. Or she was a live streamer. Hmm. She needed money for her mom's operation. Okay. And she tried a lot of things. She eventually came to Moj Live and raised the money. Oh wow! So we were like, will like will the community get so warm that people are actually like just gifting money out of uh, philanthropy? So I think that was something we did not expect that the community could grow to to sort of uh, that level. Hmm. That there's I think uh, there's this unique behavior which happens on Shared where every new quarter we find a new Baba. Who oh, spams okay. the platform? There's huh. a new guy, new Baba in the market, hmm. who will find content very spammy content and get a lot of content uh, virality on the platform. Hmm. And we, our trust and safety teams, keep finding how to curve the Baba, but like Baba promises a lot of uh, things. So, 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 <laughs> and, and it keep changes. It, it, it changes every they're quarter. New, different Baba. Different Baba. So, so one of the things which Ankur shared, I think, maybe a year back, right? So you have a Bible group, right? Well, yeah. Like yeah, some yeah. Tens of that, that, that is what I was mentioning. During COVID, we saw very interesting behavior. So there was this uh, yeah. Tamil Bible group yeah. in which, so during COVID, churches were closed, right? So, so organically, some of the people who used to join chat rooms, they used to come every early morning and they used to call themselves as prayer warriors. And they would basically say, all you guys come in and you comment below what is going wrong and we'll pray for you. So a guy would come and say that, I'm having some trouble in my family, I'm having fights, can you pray for me? And the prayer warriors will pray for them. Hmm. And this is happening organically during COVID at, at 7 a.m. in the morning. Wow. <laughs> Phenomenal. Of course, basic question. I mean, uh, early days, chicken and egg problem, uh, cold start problem, hmm. some insights. How would you do it differently today? I mean, we did it pretty well. I would not do it differently. <laughs> Uh, I think you have, to, you have to solve one side of the equation, right? Supply yeah. or demand. Yeah. Uh, we solved the supply side first. Essentially, Collected content from. Yeah, essentially, we had our uh, WhatsApp group WhatsApp running group through form. bots. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we had about, I think at one point, about 100,000 WhatsApp groups running uh, across languages, all automated. To collect content. To collect content and put them in, in share chat. And you would find again the most trending content was, used to be on WhatsApp, right? So you used to find most of that and then they used to rank it hmm. uh, within share chat. Eventually, the WhatsApp group admins, those who, 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 like, who used to run the WhatsApp groups, eventually became the first original creators yeah. of ShareChat yeah. with that bootstrapping. I strongly believe that PMF of most products should be built on back of WhatsApp and not on one <laughs> place to that, that was a virtuous loop, right? Because you took data from WhatsApp, right? And it went back and to put, WhatsApp. Put to share chat. And, uh, and, and, and that share chat led to basically again serving yeah, so, WhatsApp, right? So, so our, our entire feed was geared towards sharing as yeah, a goal. Yeah. Sharing largely on WhatsApp again. Yeah, and back, back to WhatsApp. So one content shared to WhatsApp will go viral within WhatsApp, yeah. get 100 impressions, mm. will have a link. Yeah. People will click that and download, download share chat. Phenomenal. Ankush, how does the, the market look for for more social media or media kind of opportunities, do you have some ideas? Ki, okay, this is something that you know probably somebody can build. He will not tell you. Okay, <laughs> that's I fine. Think, I think that's so. Fine. I think social media is. We we have tried tried to build social media through blackboards. It doesn't work. Hmm. I think social media finds you. You don't find social media hmm. uh, in general. But I think astrology and devotion is a big. Big space, space yeah. which something standalone can be built there. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting. interesting. And not too much has been built, like not not very yeah. large. Yeah. Not very large has come out mm. of it. Very interesting. Ankush, uh, do you still think like you know I strongly believe in Karl Chakra, right? I mean, when when everybody thought that <coughs> Facebook is a permanent monopoly, mm. right? Then we have Snapchat, mm. and then uh, TikTok was a permanent monopoly, and then we have Moj and ShareChat, and mm. you know all of that. Twitter at some point. Didn't look like a permanent money, but Bandhu Jagat Twitter. Mm. Elon came from somewhere and saved it. Yeah. Do you think that this churn will continue and we'll keep seeing newer form and forms of social media? I mean, if you if you look at it, the the emergence of new social media has slowed down. It has. Uh, yes. And these large businesses have like large platforms have become uh, they've they've captured audience well. More dominant. It is it is becoming more. Uh, I think a. Uh, Algorithms game that once you have an audience, 
somebody can innovate a new format, but you have to now then figure out how do you serve that new format to your existing audience. Hmm. And and you can say Snap emerged, but Snap is way smaller than it could have been, right? Had to, in had IG not launched stories. Yeah. So so I think it is it is becoming a far more competitive space. Uh, there's there's one more trend which is I think fueling it. The other that that, that is the uh, the cost of content is going way down. Hmm. So your AI generated content, assisted content, all of that, what it does is it allows your average creator to be far more powerful, far more creative, can can generate far more engaging content. Mm -hmm. So the cost of supply is going down, and the most valuable asset is your is the time spent that you've captured hmm. in your audience. Mm -hmm. So I think in general, when we think about our, our business long term, right, it is we, we, we believe our input costs are going down. Mm -hmm. It is going to be a game of how well can you build your algorithms to rank that content. Okay. The, the, the content itself will not be differentiated. So hence you are saying that discovering a new form of content is not relevant unless you have built the AI algorithms to, to serve it properly and serve it, retain it better. Yes. I think you have to find some other way. So I, I don't think content for, even if you build content format, you can build a standalone company, but you should expect if it is a large enough format, everyone will have a copy of it. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, Ankush, I mean, <coughs> I agree with you, but you know, if you look at, let's say, YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. YouTube is so spammy now, it's like it's just impossible to consume content on YouTube. And and they have a pressure of increasing revenues perpetually, right? Mm -hmm. So they have to keep spamming you. So don't you think that given the fact that it's easier and cheaper to build good quality content now, mm -hmm. won't there be a competitor of YouTube, which is like, okay, lesser, lower ads, better experience. I mean, if, if you can build that product at lower ads, YouTube will do it. YouTube is doing it. The, it the, no, 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 they, they already are on a, on a revenue target, right? So they have to spam you because, you know, uh, they have to meet their quarterly revenue targets. So I genuinely feel that that sounds good in theory, mm -hmm. but if, if really somebody was disrupting them, mm -hmm. they will reduce that load. They reduce that. That's, yeah. what that, that's true that they are very nimble now. Yes. They have been... Uh, the fact that I mean, no, uh, nobody won a social media because they had low, lesser ads. I think, I think eventually it will monetize. Right? Five six years ago, uh, management took over the founders, and the mm. decisions of copying became easier. I think mm. that was the inflection point there, right? Yeah, yeah. If 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 a social media stops getting inspired by other ideas, that huh. is when they die. Huh. And right now they have very widely distributed platforms yeah. which are getting inspired very quickly. Yeah. You you need to basically see. I I think Ankus, while I believe is that. People who have distribution will generally have this, but there is an element of ego which comes in, right? Mm. And, and that's what basically leads to some of these mammoth platforms to demise and the new ones to come mm. in. Right? Mm. Because, for example, this TikTok thing, right? Now, Facebook basically took this decision to copy, right? But if it would have said, okay, maybe we don't need to worry about it, mm. right? And maybe our product is superior, right? Mm and then TikTok would have become bigger, mm. then then Facebook would not have been. Exactly, bigger. exactly. So if, if larger mm. platforms uh, don't learn from the other, yeah. like they, they, so <coughs> Facebook is a good example, right? they learn from stories, they learn from short videos. Yeah. If that not learned, IG would be nowhere today. Yeah. True, true. No, I mean, I, I'm looking for relevance for myself. I'm not happy with just one share. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully all of us can do two more. Hopefully, the people in the audience. I think the other thing is what what happened now was also that. I think my, my comment is more more on building horizontal platforms. You can you still have the ability to go vertical deep. Yeah, I mean you won't build <coughs> seven hundred. That's what I'm saying. Right? Like in last ten years, Reddit has emerged as a very strong separate platform, hmm. and now with community notes, etc., etc., Twitter is sort of is encroaching into Wikipedia hmm. space, and hmm. you know they they also they rediscovered themselves. Hmm. So hopefully, you know there will be many more. Mm. Uh, one last question, Ankush, uh, not from the audience. Any plans to go international? I mean, from a revenue point of view, we are already international, uh, especially yeah. micropayments. Oh, yeah? Wow. Uh, we have about 20% of our micropayments revenue coming out largely from Middle East and chat room. Canada. Wow. Chat room. Oh, okay. Phenomenal. Uh, and that's like Indian diaspora with high, higher uh, paying capacity, gifting Indian creators, essentially. Oh, okay. Nice. So, so I think from a revenue point of view, we are there. From a consumer point of view, I think we have some time. Probably, I think we still have a. Is it in the offing? It, it, it's five years from now. Five years from now, you can't predict. <laughs> <laughs> Not in next two quarters. That's what. I'm Not in next two quarters, guys. Uh, <laughs> thank you such, so much for being a patient audience. Sorry for starting late, but uh, this brings us to the end of uh, the discussion with Ankush. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks, thanks Ankush. Thanks.